Welcome to the video on bacterial endospore. What is an endospore? An endospore is a tough resistance structure which protects a bacteria from harsh environmental conditions and it also protects itself from nutritional deficiencies so that it can survive that condition and it can remain dormant for several years and then come out and then function as normally okay so that's the advantage and that's the function of a bacteria uh, of an endospore and which bacteria actually form this endospore so these endospores are formed mainly seen to be formed by the bacteria of the group or the of, of the phylum which is firmicutes so let us look at the name for a second we will find that firmicutes composes is composed of two different words which is firm which we all know is is uh, stiff and hard and cutes is actually lat latin word this the firm is also actually latin word but it is very much similar to the word in english the cutes means that it uh, cutes actually means skin so if we combine it firm skin refers to the bacteria endospore which is forms because it is firm and it is tough and resistant so how ca does a bacteria form the endospore i have drawn some uh, images depicting the steps some diagrams and then we will continue drawing the diagram after some steps so let us look first of all we have a bacteria right if we don't have the bacteria then we what is going to form the endospore we have a bacteria with a genetic material inside it and then it is going to replicate through binary fission you can see over here two one bacteria gives two bacteria and this process is mainly through the binary fission process and this two bacteria is e e eventually one is going to differentiate and one is going to engulf this bacteria as we are going to see in the next step so over here now what is we are going to see over here is that this bacteria has actually engulfed that this bacteria so the bacteria which has been engulfed or which is going to be engulfed is called the four spore so let us look at the word for a minute we will find that four refers to pre or previous and the spore refers to a structure which is going to form an individual of the species in the future right spore formation we have studied so that four spore refers that this bacteria is going to come out and act as a spore for the future individuals okay so we know in from the concept of spore formation that spore is also a tough and resistant structure so this bacteria is actually going to change in the f in to the spore and it is called the four spore and what is this the cell is called the mother cell because this cell is going to eject this four spore outside so this cell becomes the mother cell and this process is described by uh, described as re uh, reproduction by some of the scientists okay but many also call this as not a reproduction because only one cell or one sp sp uh, spore is produced which is going to give rise to one cell only and nothing else okay so one cell giving one cell cannot be called a reproduction but many call it reproduction so let us move on to the next step which i have not drawn it so i will draw it so what will happen in the next step is that this bacteria will completely engulf this uh, four spores the mother cell will completely engulf and then start depositing layers around itself so let us look at this okay so we find that there is a bacteria there is the bacteria it has engulfed it completely and there's a genetic material and this is the disintegrated parts of the bacterial genetic material and now you will see that this layers are going to form around the back four spore so this layers are going to make may are will be made up of tough and resistant proteins such as uh, dipicolinic acid such as keratin like proteins etc so let us first see the layers form Okay, so that is one layer. Let's say that that layer contains dipicolinic acid, as I have written over there, 
and there is another layer what is it called we will write what it is what it is called but the first layer is called the dipicolinic acid layer and the blue layer is another layer and then we have outside that a layer which is called the exosporium so first let us write the exosporium okay so in gray we have our exosporium which is actually a thin layer which may not be present in all the bacteria which forms endospores but it is actually an additional feature it is composed of lipids okay lipids mainly and proteins some proteins so it is an additional feature called exosporium okay so that's exosporium and another layer which i missed out in the middle in blue is called the spore coat so it is actually the coat of the spore means coat is actually present outside most it is actually present the most outside okay coat we wear coat uh, after we wear all our shirts okay all shirts and then we wear the coat so like that the coat is actually the outermost layer if we exclude the exosporium layer which is not present actually in all types of bacteria so let us write spore coat i hope the s should be capital spore coat so we have written the three layers and actually let us write the composition also beside it it is made up of lipids and proteins and this one the spore coat is made up of keratin like protein as i had mentioned previously it is made up of keratin like proteins keratin is also a uh, resistant proteins not like that of the dipicolinic acid but it is still resistant so this spore coat the dipicolinic acid all provide the resistance to the bacteria there we have so that's composition and everything now that's the layers which are going to be deposited by the mother cell around the four spore now the four spore also synthesizes some proteins first of all first one is the same that is the dipicolinic acid which is going to deposit around in the cytoplasm of the four spore so how is it going to look like let's see so let us increase the size of the brush let's say that these proteins are synthesized around in the cytoplasm of the four spore and it is like uh, floating around in the cytoplasm so that's dipicolinic acid as i mentioned in green so these are also green so these are also dipicolinic acid okay so they are also providing extra protection and this genetic material is also protected again by some acid soluble protein so this genetic material doesn't contain histone so that it is actually acid the it is dna deoxyribonucleic acid you know so that's why it is acid and some acid soluble protein again produces again protects it okay so it again it again protects it from harsh uh, uv rays or etc so let us draw that also okay so there we have it let's say some acid soluble proteins like that surrounding the genetic material there we have that's the endospore and after all this has been formed this mother cell is going to eject it out okay so what is going to happen is that this mother cell is going to disintegrate this is not of many use now it has done its work now it is going to disintegrate and this force spore is going to be ejected out outside so let us cut and paste okay or move we can say cut and paste is actually a type of moving okay so no, now i'm not taking these labels with me because you have understood what they are meant for and there there we have our endospore now we have formed our endospore now let us talk and now we know how we form our endospore okay so now we need to talk what are the 
means how a bacteria comes to know when to form an endospore so this question might sound silly at first first of all let's clear this stuff out and then we will discuss about it more so let's copy this select all and delete okay so we have our bacterial endospore very good let us write the bacterial endospore also which is actually the topic for this video so how does a bacteria come to know or how does a bac how does this process of formation of endospore gets triggered inside the bacteria well you might answer like this that yeah, we know that bacteria forms endospore when we have deficiency in nutrients in the medium or when it is attacked by uh, uv lights okay so it comes to know by those things but if you say that it comes to know when uh, that it is facing some problem when it is attacked by uv light that will be very late right it is far too late till then then how does a bacteria come to know beforehand when to form a bacterial endospore and the answer goes to quorum sensing okay so so this process is not actually not totally for bacteria more more many organisms use this process as a means to understand if something is wrong in the environment and this is nothing fancy as the name sounds the quorum sensing means that the bacteria is going to sense the population around it this bacteria is not uh, is not solitary right it has many bacteria in the surroundings okay so it is going to sense the deaths of the bacteria and those deaths will going are going to indicate that something is wrong okay so that deaths of bacteria indicate something is wrong and then the bacteria triggers the processes of formation of endospores so when the bacteria triggers the process of formation of endospore this jet uh, many genetic parts means uh, many parts of the genetic material are activated which are not alv always activated right bacteria is not always forming the proteins like dipicolinic acid and keratin like proteins always around itself so the those genetic materials are inactive now the back when the bacteria forms the endospore it makes those areas active and forms it so that is not very very much uh, non intuitive that is intuitive anyone can say that okay without understanding more about quorum sensing anyways then we have this bacterial endospore now it has formed the spore then how does it break the spore same process quorum sensing applies over here uh, it has formed the endospore it has <coughs> survived the condition let's assume it has survived the condition in this dormant state it has survived nutrition deficiency because the metabolism is slow over here and so it has survived those harsh situations now what next how it is going to remove this endospore and become active again so let us look the process is actually called reactivation very intuitive so it is done it is actually happens it doesn't happen when the bacteria is given the correct nutrition and everything the bacteria is not going to break this endospore state quite non intuitive but when it receives a mild heat and with that the nutrition it is going to break this endospore state and become free active bacterium so what is going to happen is that it is going to destroy the uh, spore coat and the cortex okay so the epicolonic acid cortex it is going to destroy that and it is going to absorb it and the dna will synthesize all kinds of proteins which will increase the metabolism of the bacteria and it is going to start again uh, start its life again and it is going to form it is going to form an active bacteria okay so then we have learned this process then how do, do we artificially destroy this bacterial endospore now look bacterial endospore is actually a very tough structure and by natural processes it is actually impossible to destroy 
this bacterial endospore but we humans are very intelligent we can do anything if we want and we have found out means of destroying this bacterial endospore first of all it is not <coughs> destroyed by common detergents and all that but some special things such as ethylene oxide and 10% uh, bleach we these all things can destroy this bacterial endospore another effect is called tindalization which means we actually give the bacteria some heat and also put it in a nutrient medium so that it it destroys the endospore by itself and then we actually kill it by radiation and excessive radiation for long durations of time may also destroy this bacteria which because this type of radiations are not available in the earth right now okay so it has not evolved to survive that much radiation it can survive very much a mild uv radiation or some gamma radiation but prolonged gamma radiation uv radiation can actually destroy this bacterial endospore so we have discussed bacterial endospore in much detail now we will in the next video talk about exospore which is actually cyst so that's another class of bacteria which is going to form another type of spore exospore and we are going to discuss about that in the next video thank you for watching i hope this video helped you and please like comment and subscribe Thank you.